let's switch to the other side of the ball. Nick Bose is phenomenal. You went through talking about they rely on their stars. Well, this guy is one of the best in the business at what he does. Um, 2022 expectations, and how does he elevate his game? Well, I think he can elevate his game because I think the group around him is better. Uh, Kucerich is, is a great coach. I think uh, they may have uh, trouble keeping their defensive coordinator this year. I mean, he's just a fast riser. Uh, he understands it. But um, I think up front, this could be as good as they ever had. Now, DeForest Buckner was DeForest Buckner uh, in Armstead. But I think they are they are as deep at that position as any team in this league. And that's they win with that position. So how does Nick get better? Nick gets better if Javon Kinlaw is better and he's on right. the field. You know, he's better if Eric Armstead, you know, lines up and plays 17. He's better if, you know, the guys that, you know, Mike, you know, Drake Jackson comes on and can play a significant amount of snaps. You know, if they can get the type of year from Kerry Hyder that they got two years ago. Like, all those things make Nick better. Um, because Nick, the one thing that I love about Nick that other guys that are talked about in that conversation of being the best, that he understands when the game is in the balance, like taking down Aaron Rodgers in the fourth quarter last year, getting after Mahomes in a Super Bowl game. Like he he knows instinctively kind of when to take a game over and finish it out. They get the ball out of the quarterback's hands, the sack, the uh, all the, the the plays, the negative plays that lose yardage, all that stuff comes. He's always going to play as hard as anybody on the field. But if he can be in a, in a little bit of, of a good rotation, we don't need him in week one for 60 plays. That's going to make him better at the end of the season and the postseason. All right, let's go to the voice of Brian Baldinger, uh, insider 95.7, the game you see him everywhere, NFL Network, Compass, Fox, all over the place, one of the best in the business. Here on our red and gold preview for the 2022 season. All right, pick me one on each side. Give me who you think needs to be the breakout player offensively and defensively for this team this year. Well, I'm going to say I, I, there's something about Tyrion Davis-Price that I really like. Um, he was probably drafted higher than he should have. He's a one-year player at LSU. Um, but I, I like his contact balance. Like He looks like a good fit in this particular scheme. So I know it's Elijah Mitchell's team. I'm sure Wilson will be number two. And I, I'm sure there's competition for that role. But we also know that over the course of the season, there's going to be 400 rushing attempts, maybe more. Um, you know, I, I think if he gets 100 or more, he's got, or he, he gets in a rhythm or a groove at some point. Like I could see him getting a lot of carries and becoming a really important part of this football team. And then just there's a couple guys on this defensive front that I really like, and I think they have a chance. Like, if I go and I look at, say, like Drake Jackson or even a guy like, um, uh, like, uh, Amenahu, right? Like, I just think, like, he is a guy that I think Charles Amenahu, or even a guy like, uh, Tarek, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of his, uh, just blanking here for a second, but Tarek, Kamoko Tarek. Like, right. This, like he is a guy that's on a second contract, like a lot of these guys that flourish in San Francisco. But I guess the guy that I would have to say, I, I'm waiting for Javon Kinlaw just to break out, stay healthy and break out. Be a monster player. And we can always throw in as IU continues to take another step. And also the quarterback's going to be important to, to even yeah. elevate, which you hit on uh, all throughout this, uh, this great stuff here on the red and gold preview here on 95, seven, the game. All right. Baldy, um, I'm going to give you five. I want you to put, put the numbers by the top five teams in the NFC. Put numbers by them. Um, if I give you, I'm going to go Tampa, San Francisco, Rams, Packers, and I'm going to let you pick the fifth one. This, if you have a fifth one that should be in there that I'm leaving out. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. All right. So who, who's who's the fifth one? Who, Tampa, Green Probably Bay. New Orleans. Okay, perfect. A Super New Bowl Orleans caliber defense. And weapons Orleans back. Fair enough. All right. I'll even give you this. Add the sixth one. You like Philadelphia better than Dallas right now, correct, yes. Baldy? All mm -hmm. right. So we got six teams. Number them today. Not how they're going to finish, but going into the season, put a number by each in order, one through six, how they, how you well, have them as I best think Tampa's worst. going to struggle. I think they're okay. going to struggle. Like, they might figure it out. They might get healthy. But 
the injuries that they have suffered in the interior of that offense line is exactly the area that Tom Brady can't afford. Right. Just can't. And so um, the way that they want to play, uh, they need to. So I'm going to say Tampa six. Okay. I'll say New Orleans five. I'll say Philly four. I'll say San Francisco three. Uh, I'll say Green Bay and then the Rams. All right, Baldy, with that, the, the top six, are the Packers and Rams pretty close together in this thing? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, the one thing the Rams did, like Kansas City did when they made the trade of Devontae Adams, was they had a chance to get a lot better defensively. And so, you know, they picked up Devontae Wyatt and they picked up Quay Walker. And their team speed right now is just so much better defensively. And so they got to get the, you know, they're, they're going to lose Devontae in some big spots, fourth downs, red zone, like finishing drives. We, we, we get that. But that's Aaron Rodgers' job now. His job is to, to find the timing with Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson and, you know, different players. So they might have to do it differently. But the organization, the quarterback, the way they operate, they're still an elite franchise. And so it's not going to change with just the loss of a great wide receiver. All right. Fill in the blank on these next two questions. The 49ers season will be a disappointment if? Well, if they don't make the playoffs, it'll be a disappointment. Like, I don't, you know, they got to get to the postseason. They've got too many great players. Um, they've been at this thing, you know, a long time, Lynch and Shanahan. Like, they, you know, in a, in a, in a league where, or in a division where Russell Wilson isn't in Seattle anymore, and that was a great rivalry for so long, Seattle and San Francisco, they're not going to be as good without Russell. Um, they, they should be a playoff team. Not to make the playoffs would be a huge disappointment. The 49ers will win the Super Bowl if? If uh, Trey Lance plays like a top-10 quarterback. Right. He doesn't have to be the best quarterback in the league, but to be a top-10 quarterback, which means somewhere, you know, 25 to 30 touchdowns, Sean, keeping the interceptions under 10. Like, if he becomes that level of player, um, then they will have a chance for a Super Bowl run. Yeah, if he's a 29 and 10, a 30 and 9 guy, one of those type, Baldy, mm -hmm. touchdowns and picks, they got a chance to be staring at February in Arizona, and you and I both know that, with their roster. Mm -hmm. That'll mean things are going well. Defense isn't on the field as long. They're not giving other teams a short field. All right, let's finish with this. Record prediction, and how how deep do they go? Playoffs or Super Bowl? Uh, where does, where does know, it look, stop I'll this just, year? I, I'll throw out 11-6. Um, and six. I think 11-6 and six is doable for this team. And, you know, that's probably not a division win. Uh, but so they'll be in a wild card weekend. Um, you know, and look, nobody could have predicted what they did to Dallas and Green Bay a year ago. And so I'll just say that there will be highly competitive games in January with an eleven and six record. Yeah, I'm thinking eleven and six as well, Baldy. I think it's going to be different, and I do too think that that's that'll be enough for the wild card. Some that, that there'll be more wins in the division, but and and I think that there's it'll come down to a possession or two in the divisional game to get them to the championship to the NFC championship game. If you're asking me today, if I was gambling, would I put the 49ers in February? I'd say no. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's a chance. But if I was a bet man today, I'd say no. I hope I could redo a few, uh, redo it as the season's going on. Because yeah. if Lance comes out smoking, then then I did a whole different ball game for me. And I'm concerned if something happens to him and the whole Jimmy G situation that could end up. You know how that goes, Baldy. Two or three games matters. It does matter. Oh yeah, no, no question about it, Sean. And so, uh, you you know, it, every every year is a different year. We understand that. And like all, like I remember last year, the Rams went through a stretch where they didn't win a game in November. They were, they lost three in a row and they had a bye week. They didn't lose, they, they didn't win a game in over a month. Right. And they won the Super Bowl. Like the year before, Tampa won their last eight in a row. At some point, you're either going to be come together as a team. And doesn't matter where you play, who you play, who's healthy, you find ways to win games. Like those teams, they emerge. You can't – it's hard to predict them now. We couldn't – Cincinnati had a 10-7 and 7 record last year. You know, they they struggled in games. But there they were within, you know, a couple of plays of winning Super Bowl 56. So every – this season is important. And each week is important. 
as to how you develop and what you become. And so the, the season is is it's week to week. You know, you lose two games in this league. I don't care what your seat, what your record is, and who your team is. You lose two games in this league, back to back. The sky is falling, and right. you got you got to find a way to win to stop that thing from falling. You're not kidding. That is the red and gold preview 2022. Brian Baldinger, Sean Stiles. We will be with you throughout the season on 95.7 The Game. Special thanks to Whit, uh, to Whitley Sandretto, who is going to make us sound and look even better than, well, than Baldy does. I got yeah. the hat to cover up anything I need. Thanks to Whitley. Thanks to 95.7 Game. Baldy, nobody does it better, brother. You're thanks, always John. on top of yeah, your game, good, and I know you got to I, – I don't know how you know where you are daily, but I'm grateful you're with me, brother. I appreciate it, and I love you, man. Keep up the good work. I look forward to doing it again, Sean. All right? Okay. Thanks. We'll Appreciate it, Baldy. Thanks, buddy. All right, buddy. That is 95-7 the game. That is our red and gold preview for season 2022.